Hello friends, my name is Sonia. This is Sonia with an I and today I am bringing you a November reading wrap up. The month of November started off with a bang. I was doing this uh, reading challenge with my good friends Mitzi and Elizabeth. I was doing the Moore Montgomery challenge. I was so excited. I mean, I came flying out of that gate like Flojo and I hit a wall. <laughs> I just literally hit a wall. Uh, seven books in a month is great. I mean, it's still a book a week. I'm, I'm happy with that. It's not my norm. And with I don't know if it's the business of the season. I don't know if it has been the the Christmas, like the ooh, shiny ornaments, read Christmas books. I, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. So um, I will tell you about the books that I've read this month. And I've, I've read some good books, I books that I've thoroughly enjoyed. I loved participating in the More Montgomery Challenge. Thank you so much, Elizabeth and Mitzi, for inviting me. Uh, we did a live last night. It was so nice to talk about the books that we've read. Um, I'm sorry that I didn't, I feel like I didn't do enough, but thank you very much for inviting me to take place in that. So uh, let's begin with what I started the month off with. I started the month off with Jane of Lantern Hill by Ellen Montgomery. This was the group read last year for the More Montgomery Challenge, and I didn't get to it, so I thought, well, I'm going to do this, and then I'll do A Tangled Web. I'll hit both of them. So Jane of Lantern Hill is about a little girl named Jane, and she lives with her mother and grandmother, and she doesn't really know her. She thinks her father is dead. And she, uh, her grandmother is a hag, and the mother is... A, a flake and I would like to knock all of the heads of all the adults together in this book because they drive me crazy like Jane is the only one that has any sense in this whole entire book but Jane finds out through you know Jane is very she's very like down on herself and I mean her grandmother's a hag I can see why and her mother doesn't have any backbone and she her she's enamored with her mother and she ends up kind of accidentally finding that her father is still alive because her father wants her to come and visit him and have a relationship with him. She's 13. Where's he been? Like, where you been? Anyway, <laughs> she visits him and she, you know, she basically becomes the mom of the house. Like she decorates the house, she cooks for him and she's wanted to do all these things, but her grandmother wouldn't let her cause that's like lowly work. And uh, she develops this relationship with her father and she really enjoys, she wants her mom and dad to get together so bad. And the story is so sweet. Jane is the sweetest, most kind and loving character. And her, her parents don't deserve her. And the adults in this book are just disgusting. Like, now, as mad as the adults made me in this book, like I, I, I threw some chicken fits because the grandmother. Anyway, um, I gave this, I gave it four stars. I really did enjoy it. I, typical Ellen Montgomery, typical mod, very atmospheric, lots of beautiful descriptions. I want a cottage on Lantern Hill from everything that she described. And of course there, it's in PI and just beautiful. I am so glad I read this. I did, I did an audio of this. I didn't physically read it, but I loved it. It was fantastic. Um, I then read Anne of West Philly. And this is a retelling of Anne of Green Gables by Ivy Noel Weir. And this is about Anne. She's an orphan and she lives in West, in this, you know, West Philly. And the, she goes to live with a uh, brother and sister, Matthew and Marilla, just like in the story. But it's a very modern day tale of Anne of Green Gables. And she's like, she's really smart. She's like into STEM. And um, it's just, it was a darling little graphic novel. It was, I read it in one sitting. I was so glad I read it. I gave it five stars. I thought it was a wonderful, modern little tale. I didn't feel like it took anything away from Anne of Green Gables. Um, I liked the ending better than I like Anne of Green Gables, though I love the ending of Anne of Green Gables, but it tears me up. I need therapy every time I read it. 
Um, it just really was a very cute story and I'm so glad I read it. As I said, I gave it five stars and I did eyeball read it. It was a graphic novel. Um, the next book that I read was Murder, She Wrote book. It is uh, A Fatal Feast. It's number 32 in the Jessica Fletcher uh, Murder, She Wrote series. Uh, it was the Thanksgiving, um, the Thanksgiving themed book of the year, of, or of the series, sorry. Uh, I, I, would I, I get this question a lot in my comments. Do you have to read the Murder, She Wrote books in order? My opinion, no, because they're episodic and it's very much like watching an episode of Murder, She Wrote. And when I watched Murder, She Wrote episodes, I mean, it was just whatever was on television. And, you know, when I watch the reruns, it's just whatever's on television. So it's not, I very much take this book like I do, that I take the Murder, She Wrote television show. And I don't feel like it has to be read in any sort certain order. I only also... My caveats for this is I only read the ones that take place in Cabot Cove and I usually only read the seasonal ones because there are like eight bazillion, million trillion in the series. And I love Jessica Fletcher and this one's written by Donald Bain and I've learned from my friend Esther that Donald Bain has since passed. So um, there are other authors for them. I am currently actually reading the newest author because I'm reading the Christmas one now and, uh, or not reading it currently now, but I, I have it on my list to read. I have it checked out. This book was great. Uh, Jessica wants to sit back and relax. It's Thanksgiving in Cabot Cove and her friend, uh, George Sutherland from Scotland Yard, who I think there's a romance there. She, and, and, I mean, and it's really clear and she even says, you know, they just, they live different lives, but she really does care for him. Well, he's coming to stay with them and experience his first Thanksgiving. And she doesn't want the town to talk, so she has asked him to stay with Seth. And, but she's a little nervous about it because, you know, he and Seth might heads a little bit. And I really liked the, you know, you don't get a lot of ro And I can't believe I'm going to, I just caught myself. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I liked the little touch of sweet romance in it. You know, Jessica's a beautiful, vibrant, you know, yes, she's, I think she's in her 50s or 60s uh you know I, when I say she's in her 50s and I think I'm 50 that hurts my brain a little but still <laughs> she you know she, she's vibrant and why wouldn't she have some sort of romance but anyway she ends up uh inviting the this new couple to Thanksgiving like her Thanksgiving table keeps growing there's a new couple in town and she invites them to Thanksgiving and there's an, a gentleman who kind of behaves oddly like maybe he has some special needs or something and he's always standing in front of her house and kind of staring at her house and she decides to you know take an initiative and go and introduce herself and talk to him and she finds you know he's kind of a little bit odd but she just believes that everybody deserves to have you know family at thanksgiving she talks to him invites him and they have this great big thanksgiving dinner with all of these people and uh, there's some history with some people in this, and you kind of find that throughout the book. Uh, she and George go and take a little romantic after turkey stroll, or, you know, and then she discovers a body. So there are more bodies in Cabot Cove, but it's still just the most... How do you keep it cozy? I don't know, but they certainly do. I really enjoyed this. This is four-star. These reads are usually four-star reads for me. Um because they seem so episodic they seem so much like a murder she wrote episode I can read it on my own and you know even the ones that you know this one's a little bit more modern but they still use the telephones I, I'm still feeling like it's the that 80s murder she wrote that I read or that I watched when I was a kid so I really enjoyed this if you have not picked up a Murder, She Wrote book, as I said, you I don't feel like you have to read them in order. If you want to and you want to challenge yourself, I think, like I said, there's 70 million, billion, zillion of them, go for it. But you really don't need to read these in order. And if you just happen to want, you know, if you're a mood reader like me or a seasonal reader and or a holiday reader, and you just decide that, hey, I, I, want a, I want a Thanksgiving book or I want a Christmas book or a New Year's book or whatever, and you just happen to read it, I think you'll be fine. So... 
I really enjoyed this one. I It is a series that I'm glad that I picked up and started reading more of. The next one is a new series to me, and it is a Mail Carrier Cozy Mystery one. This is Stamped Out by Tanya Kappas. I really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. It was, I listened to it. It was a really short listen. It was only about five hours. Um, my other mom is a retired postal worker. So I remember going to the post office after school and, you know, went, before I went home and, and, you know, I was in the post office a lot as a kid. So this, I don't, I have a, I just have a fondness for postal workers because of that and anything that has to do with post office. So the main character, and it's very Southern, which I like, uh, main character's name is Bernadette, and the, she lives in Sugar Gap Creek, and it is just this little cozy town, and she goes, and this is smart because she goes, she's a mail carrier, so she goes to everybody's houses and delivers everybody mail, so you know, she knows everything about everybody, and uh, there is this country club that is go that it's going to be for sale and she finds out that her good friend is going to buy it and uh she is a she is a widow and her best friend is named mac and mac was her husband's best friend and uh mac has always kind of been like the you know the step-in dad for her son and you know just a kind of a partner with her but they're friends they're not there's not a romance there but they're there's a kind of a little bit of a tingle there and she's kind of surprised that she's that he's buying this property because there's talk that he's going to develop it and turn it into condos and the, of course you know they, the town is against that they don't want to lose like the coziness of their town and uh the the person that mac is dealing with ends up dead and then there's an investigation there's also some little um side stories to this like there's some history that the main character finds out which i like i like when little things kind of just pop up there's a darling cat whose name is uh, Rowena, I think is her name, and she's cute, and she's a ginger kitty, so of course I love her, and I'm really looking forward to the rest of this series. My good friend Amy, um, Amy Marie, started reading this, and she's talked about it, and I picked it up, and I really love it, so thank you, Amy, for, for suggesting that book. Great little series, and like I said, I, I, if it's a anything postal worker, I'm going to really enjoy it. So the next one I read was number four from the year-round Christmas, Christmas Town, Silent Night, Deadly Night by Vicki Delaney. I enjoy this series. I, it, is, it is definitely Christmas. I stopped at book three because it was Christmas in July, so I read that in July. And Silent Night, Deadly Night is takes place around the week before Thanksgiving. So I was like, oh, this is the perfect time to read this. Mary Wilkinson is the main character. She owns Mrs. Claus's Treasures, and they live in Rudolph, New York. Her dad, I love her dad. Her dad plays Santa Claus, and his name is Noel, and her sister's name is Carol. I ain't can you get any more precious than this. I mean, seriously. But um, she, her mother has decided to invite all of her college friends back to her home and, like, host a girlfriend's weekend or girlfriend's Thanksgiving, like a Friendsgiving sort of thing. And she becomes, she, I think her, her mom has kind of forgotten how some of the friends interact and they're not behaving in the way that they, sh that she feels like they should. And she's very disappointed. And, you know, the, the girl, there's, you know, and then there's people from all walk of life in this group. Of course, you know, there's the rich witch and then there's the poor woman who doesn't have anything and the rich witch bully, bullies her. And then there's the bossy one and then there's the self-righteous one. And so there's a little bit of all types of kind of, um, stereotypical women traits that you get in a lot of books and uh it one of those women end up being murdered and so it's kind of like almost a closed room sort of murder which i kind of enjoy that i really liked this one um they didn't it wasn't real heavy on there's a little bit of a romance but it was kind of it was very very towards the back which i'm all right with that she's kind of still developing a relationship and since it's book three, I don't want to get it, or book four, I don't want to get into it too much because I don't really want to give a bunch of spoilers. But I really, I really enjoyed this. Um, I I gave it 
trying to remember how many stars I gave. I gave four stars. It was the perfect timing for me because it was right. I read it right before Thanksgiving. Uh, the only complaint I have about this book, and I know it's written probably for for humor's sake, I don't find her humorous. Is the the well the, her neighbor that owns the like the she sells like the cheap Chinese stuff in, you know, and thinks it's, tre you know, kind of a treasure sort of thing. And, you know, there's nothing, whatever, you know, whatever you want to buy, that's fine. But her neighbor, she is, the sales neighbor is not good. But her sales associate, Jackie, is, I would have fired her. Like, and she's awful. She is hateful to Mary. She doesn't want to do anything. She doesn't do what she's supposed to do. She's always asking for a raise. And I just feel like that Mary just kind of bows down to her. And I'm not saying that if you're a boss, you're like, oh, I'm up here and up here. No, no, no. You know, you collaborate together. I, I've been in, I've been a manager before. I, I, I get that. She's disrespectful. And it makes me mad. <laughs> like, I would fire you. You would be gone, honey. You can't talk to people that way. Anyway, she, that's the only thing. And I think that it, you know, probably in there for humor or whatever. I just, she makes me really angry. The cover for this book, by the way, is Darling. I love the dog. I absolutely love him. He's so cute. Uh, he is a um, St. Bernard. And I just love St. Bernard's anyway, because they're just huge and, you know, they're bumbly and anyway, so cute. The next book I read was uh, A Merry Little Murder Plot by Jen McKinley. This is book The Library Lover's Mystery, book 15. And uh, I was so excited when I saw this because I love The Library Lovers. I'm going to turn on a little bit of a light there because it just got really dark outside. Right, sorry about that. Uh, I love The Library Lovers. This was like going back to... Um, Going back to Briar Creek, seeing the people, seeing the community, being a part of that. I love that. I, I absolutely love that part of this book, and I love that experience. Um, it is Christmas time in Briar Creek, and a famous author comes to town. Lindsay's really excited about it. and uh, But she's kind of got, like, she's sort of grinchy. Like, she's not very warm. She's not very friendly. And Lindsay can't really figure that out. And um, there's another newcomer who comes in, and she's an author too. And uh, she kind of comes off a little bit stalkerish with the other author. And you kind of find out there's history there. There's also another person who's just been voted as the head of the library, Lee, the library group, and she wants to start banning books. So there's a lot of chatter about book banning, and there's a lot of chatter about, you know, allowing people to choose what their children read instead of people telling them that, you know, banning the books and things. And, you know, you can tell that the the author is very passionate about that. And in this, Jackie is the kind of the stalkerish other author that, you know, that's, you find, start to find out she's, she has really a checkered, kind of a checkered past. And then um, she ends up being the body and the investigation begins. This one kind of took a little bit of a, a darker turn, I thought. Like, it was not as cozy as it usually is, though there was a lot of lemon in this one. And it wasn't about the lemon. I like the ones that are about the lemon. It wasn't about the lemon, but it still had a lot of lemon in it. So that was nice. I enjoyed that. Um, I gave this one 3.5 stars. Uh, there was a little... Little side drama with another couple that I just found irritating. Um, I don't I enjoyed it. I'm not saying, I, I, when I say 3.5, that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it. There were just some little elements in it that I didn't care for, I guess. So I did enjoy it. I'm glad that I read this. It was so nice to go back to that little community and feel like that, you know, you're taking a visit, you're visiting with friends. A great little, also most of the, you know, this was my, kind of my first really truly Christmas read too. So that was nice. My last book that I read of the month that I actually just finished, I just finished the last day of November was The Wish Book Christmas. And this was book two in the If I Were You series, which I didn't know was a series. I haven't read the first one. I just saw The Wish Book Christmas. It's by Lynn Austin. Mitzi had uh, mentioned this book and 
it just brought me so much nostalgia about the wish book that I thought, okay, I need to read this. And it, I just thought it was darling. It's about two best friends who are celebrating Christmas, post-war post -war America, 1951. The Sears catalog has come, and they both have boys who are in kindergarten, and the boys are obsessed with the Christmas, I, I mean, Christmas catalog. I mean, I was too. I, I, let's be fair. How could you not be? I mean, not in 1951. That was before my time. But it was, you know, it was just, that's what you look forward to. And as the boys are continually say, they're just talking about Santa Claus, Santa Claus, Santa Claus, and bring me gifts and bring me gifts. And bring, they start to kind of wonder if their children are kind of missing the point of Santa, of Christmas. And so they, they talk to them about, you know, it being the birth of Jesus and how the, in, the boys are playing in a nativity play and they're wise men. They call them the smart men, which makes me laugh. And even Audrey... Or start teaching them a lesson about why the wise men brought the gifts to Jesus and how we can give gifts like Jesus, you know, give gifts like God does. And I just thought it was so delightful. And what a heartwarming story. It wasn't a super long story. I listened to this. I think it was a little under six hours. But it was really showing that, you know, the, the women, the mothers are showing the boys the true meaning of Christmas and along with that, they're healing their own hearts because both women have kind of a history and some healing to do. I thought it was delightful. I loved it. I, I it, it gave me the whole, aww, uh, and I don't know. It was just super sweet. I get, ended up giving this one four stars as well. And that's the end of my November. You know, I feel like I had, I enjoyed the books that I read. The lowest rating I gave was 3.5 stars, I think. I will say I did start two books that I DNF'd, and I don't usually mention DNF books because, I, I don't know, I just, you know, because a lot of times I don't DNF it because it's bad or I'm not enjoying it. I DNF it because it's not the season I want to read it in or something else. So the two that I DNF'd, um, you know, I probably will read both of them. I, I did not get to The Tangled Web. I read a little bit into that, and I just... I couldn't get into it. I and I will eventually. It just wasn't the season. So, yeah, that's that's it. What did you read in November? Did you have like a fantastic reading month? I feel like I had a good reading month. Like I said, I didn't. I read some really good books. I just didn't have any. I don't believe I had any five star reads. If I, I'm I'm looking at my list here, I don't think I have. Oh no, I did. I gave Anne of West Philly five stars, so I did have a five star read. That's awesome. Anyway, um, I'm going to get going. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, how about a uh, some sort of fall emoji in the comment box? I had, My friend Amy Marie gave me these beautiful leaf earrings. Aren't these darling? And since November is kind of the farewell to fall, even though fall still t is in December too, um, you know, let's leave a little fall love and... What are you looking for, forward to reading in December? I'd love to hear about that too. Did you read any of these books? Are you immersing yourself in Christmas now? Let's talk about it in the comments. Thanks again for being here. You make the world a better place just by being here. I appreciate you and I thank you. Until next, next time, happy reading. Goodbye now.